Hi, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. In this episode, we're going to look at a few tips for getting better control of your emitter position in Trap Code Particular. Now, if you're not familiar with Particular, here's a very brief overview. Trap Code Particular is a 3D particle generation system for After Effects. It can be used to create anything from fireworks to clouds to bubbles to just generally odd and cool looking stuff that can be used as motion graphics backgrounds or transitions. Now once you've gone into the settings and have set up your particle system's behavior, there really isn't much work for you to do with regard to the particles themselves. The particles that are emitted will just follow their predefined pattern of behavior with some variation. But one of the things you will probably need to do over time is animate the position of the particle emitter. That is, you'll need to change the location from which the particles are appearing at different times in your animation. Now that can be a little difficult, as you'll see, but I'll show you some simple things that you can do to make it a lot easier. And if you don't have Trap Code Particular, you can always download a trial version from the Red Giant software website to try it out and follow along. Now, Particular is a pretty robust and complex tool with a lot of options. But one thing that was designed for simplicity's sake was the emitter's position tools. Since many animators will never work in 3D, making the basic position tool only XY based is perfect because it means that we can use a point control crosshair to easily set and animate the position of the emitter. Of course, when you're ready to work in 3D, there is the position Z property right here. But for ease of use, this is set up for a quick 2D animation. But like many effects that use a point control, the position of particulars emitter is a bit hard to access if you want to make changes. As soon as you deselect the particular effect, the point control disappears. Then you have to go back into the effect to get to it. So I'm going to show you how to quickly link the position of the emitter to a null object, an invisible layer that has all the properties of a visible layer such as position and is easily accessible in your composition. So I'm going to choose Layer, New, Null Object. And with the null selected, I'll hit P to reveal the position property in the timeline. Then I'll select my particular layer and in the effects panel, I'll go into the emitter properties and I'll find the position XY property. Then I'll alt click, or if you're on a Macintosh, option click on the position XY property stopwatch to activate an expression. Then in the timeline, I'll use the position XY properties expression control pick whip to grab hold of the null object's position. Then once that's done, I'll hit enter on the number pad to confirm the expression. Now if I move the null around, the emitter follows it. And of course, the null object's position is keyframeable. And even if I don't have the layer selected, the null remains visible in the composition, but not in the final render. And as a side note, you can even use this setup to animate the position of the emitter by hand by using the motion sketch tool, a 2D capture tool for recording the position of your mouse as you move it. So choose Window, Motion Sketch, which brings up the motion sketch controls. Then select your null object, and in the motion sketch controls, choose Start Capture, which turns your cursor into a crosshair. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that icon in the video capture, but it's there. Then just go into the comp window, click and hold to begin your capture, and then just move around. When you're done, let go to stop. In the timeline, you can see that a ton of keyframes have been added. Do a RAM preview, and there you go. Your motion has been added to the null object, which in turn affects the particular emitter's position. If you're finding that the captured motion is not smooth enough, and that's likely to happen, before you start your capture, you can dial up the smoothing property, which tells After Effects to smooth out the motion by removing unnecessary keyframes. Yeah, you're trading accuracy for smoothness, but it usually looks much better. Now, if you've already captured your motion and you want to smooth it later, you can use the Smoother tool, which you can find under Window, The Smoother, which does the same thing. Just select the position property, which selects all of the keyframes, and in the Smoother controls, hit Apply. Okay, all of that is well and good for 2D, but what if you want your emitter to move around in 3D? Well, things get a little more complicated, uh, but not so complicated I can't explain it in the space of about two minutes or so, so hang in there. 
In this composition, I have the trap code particular effect on my solid layer, and my null object is already keyframed to animate through 3D space. With my particular layer selected, in the effects panel, I'll alt click on the position XY property, and again, I'll drag it to copy the nulls position property. As you can see, After Effects creates this odd expression that reads as follows. Temp equals blah 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 blah. I'm not going to read it to you. You can see it on your screen. But basically, it means the following. From this point forward, the term temp is shorthand for the value of the position property of the layer called null1, which can be found in this composition. Frankly, we could easily replace the word temp with any other word. That's just the default name that After Effects creates. You might want to rename it to position or some other name, but in truth, the name doesn't matter. All we're saying is that whenever After Effects sees the word temp in this expression, it should understand that it's referring to the null layer's position property. So again, the word temp is just shorthand for the null object's position property. And we're using shorthand so that we don't have to write this whole thing every time we want to refer to it. And we do that twice on the next line. Now, on that next line, we have temp0 and temp1. Basically, since the position property is made up of an array of values, and by that I mean the position x value, the position y value, and the position z value, After Effects needs to determine which position value we're talking about. So x is referred to as 0, y as 1, and z as 2. So what's written here is that the position xy property should use the current values found in the null object's position x and the position y. The third value, position z, has not been included here because there's only room for two values in the position xy. So After Effects has actually discarded that third value so things don't get confused. Make sense? Of course, we still need the value for z, and so we have to do a little more work, but this is really easy. With my particular layer selected, in the timeline, I'll find the property called position Z, which is right below the position XY property. Then again, I'll alt click on the position Z property stopwatch to create an expression, and then I'll drag the expression pick whip over to the null object's position Z value. Now this is really important. You want to make sure that you're dragging over the position Z value and not the word position or any of the other two values. Otherwise, After Effects will assign the value of x position or y position instead of z position. So again, make sure you're dragging it over the z position value, and once done, well, there you go. The expression that's created says that the emitter's position z property should use the null object's z position value as its own. And we know it's using the z position because of this little 2 in the bracket. With that done, Particular is now using the null object to control the position of the emitter. A quick RAM preview and you can see that. Hopefully, this will help you the next time you use Trap Code Particular. And hey, remember, if you don't have Trap Code Particular, you can always download a trial version of the software and give it a go. And just for watching this tutorial, we're going to give you a discount on Trap Code Particular. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now these are time sensitive discounts, they won't last forever. All coupon codes expire 7 days from the launch date of each tutorial. That's right, just one week for the deal. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. Once again, I'm Arlen Rabinowitz and this is Red Giant TV. See you next time.